the difference equation for this comb filter looks like y equals and you see back at the summing junction that y is composed of x plus and then we have our second term which is g times the output of the delay line which is just the output delayed by n samples so that's y of n minus capital N now let's turn this difference equation into a lab view vi I'll begin from scratch with a blank VI. Let's begin by viewing the available functions and I'm looking for under signal processing under filters and scroll to the bottom and we'll find the IIR filters and I'm looking for just IIR filter, basic structure there. Now let's turn on the context sensitive help and study the details of this IIR filter. We see that we need a data source Go that, that becomes filtered we need some specific coefficients to set up the specifics of the filter. So let's study the difference equation implemented by this filter in a little more detail. When we compare, or I, I'd like to rewrite this in the notation I was using earlier, so I'll call this y of n equals 1 over a naught, and this first summation begins at 0, and we have our first b coefficient b0 multiplying x of n and so on so then we see delayed versions of x this one starts at k equals 1 so we have minus a1 we have our delayed version of y minus a2 another delayed version of y eventually we can write minus a capital N and so on Let's compare that to the difference equation we had for the comb filter. So matching terms, we need x to be associated with this chunk. And then we need gy of n minus cap n to be associated with this piece. So we can begin choosing our coefficients. And I'll begin by setting a0 to 1. And that means then that we need B0 to likewise be 1. And we need A sub cap N to be minus G. And then all the other coefficients are 0. So next we need to create some arrays for the A coefficients and the B coefficients that we can feed to the IIR filter and I'll choose a math script node for this purpose. So I'll begin creating the array by setting or creating a 1 by capital N plus 1 array of zeros and why capital N plus 1? Well we had the coefficient a sub n, and we also had the coefficient a of 0 to work with. Now note that the math script array starts with index 1 and not 0. So when I say a of 1 equals 1, that's actually my a0 coefficient. So if I say a of cap n plus 1, equals minus g that becomes my a sub cap n coefficient and let's try to make everything appear on one line and last of all we need to create an array of b coefficients and I'll set my b0 coefficient to 1 
and of course everything else ends up being zero. So I use the square brackets to say that I'm actually creating an array element. Now we, we uh, right click on the left side of the math script node to define inputs for our variables. So we have cap n and lowercase g. And those, of course, need to match exactly, case included, what we have with our math script node. Output wise, we have a and b coefficients, but let's see if we can match those up so we don't have a wire cross. Forward core, excuse me, we uh, see the forward and reverse coefficients here. The reverse coefficients are also known as the A coefficients because those are the ones that look back at Y and those that are looking at X are the B coefficients. So that way I can just do direct wires. Alright, let's see if we can understand the error message here. It says we've got a scalar connected to an array. Well, if we right click on the output of our math script node, it's presently defaulting to a scalar, so I'll change that to an array. I'll go ahead and do the same thing on the B coefficient array. Now I'll do a right click and say create a control. And I'll do these or do that for each of my inputs to the math script node. Now g ought to be a, a float, and that makes sense. Um, n, however, is an integer, so I'm going to change that by adjusting its properties. So we actually need to look at data range, and over here I can select, and I'll pick an unsigned 32-bit integer since n shouldn't be less than zero. Now notice we see the coercion dot saying that we're taking a integer and turning it into a double. Now I want to find a signal source that corresponds to an impulse. So this way we can evaluate the impulse response of the comb filter. Now let's switch to the front panel and I'll go ahead and do a quick alignment of our two controls so far. And I want to place a graph for my A coefficients so I can confirm that the minus G is ending up in the right spot. And then I'll place another graph for the comb filter output. If I double click and adjust the name, that'll make it easier to find when I go back to the block diagram. All right, let's scooch this out of the way a little bit and connect that up to the A coefficient. And connect that up to the response. And I believe we're ready to give this a try. So control E is the shortcut for switching back and forth between front panel and the array, or excuse me, the uh, block diagram. Now when I click run, uh, nothing startling seems to happen, but notice that the n value is presently set to zero. So let's make our delay a little bit longer. Now we see that the gain coefficient is zero, so we essentially have our first direct path, but nothing after that. Now gain actually needs to be one or some fraction less than one. I'm going to change this to a dial control and that will give us more flexibility in establishing that as a fractional value. Under properties is where I can set 
the range of the dial as being 0 to 1. All right, so let's try adjusting the dial to something other than just an integer. I'll try to move that out of the way. Now the way we have this set up right now is I adjust the dial and then I click run and then it executes the block diagram one time. Now this should give us a more rapid decay because every impulse is being multiplied by a smaller gain factor. When I push run continuously then that allows us to explore the results of increasing and decreasing n and adjust, adjusting the gain.